Mark, how are you? Good, thanks, man. How are you doing? I'm uh, I'm doing great, actually. Um, Good. But we've got more important things uh, to talk about, like uh, what you've been up to lately. Now, before we head into your uh, solo album, I'd like to do, kind of jump back into your childhood a little bit, because when 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 did music and then on the other side kind of this this Japanese cultural influence when did those two for you start to collide uh so I mean to be honest the the the, the Japanese side of things is is a much more recent thing um okay. it's probably since the first the first time I went there so probably sort of 2014 I was like okay. exposed to a lot of Japanese music and stuff like that and the culture and everything uh but yeah the, the music thing is just like, like um it's like anybody really has like you know playing in bands when I was a kid and stuff and somehow never stopped doing that so yeah so so let's delve into the music uh first and because uh, you were quite young when you started uh I, I believe you started on guitar am I right yeah yeah so um yeah I kind of always wanted to be a guitar player um and yeah it was like playing in bands and stuff playing covers and trying to write original songs um since i was about 16 or something but um okay. yeah never never got into any sort of decent band before the whole dragon force thing happened so kind of always playing in pubs and clubs <laughs> with about five people watching us <laughs> but i mean those those moments i i suppose are quite important because it it um it basically weeds out the people who who uh who aren't ready for it or aren't willing to put in the, the amount of effort I think uh, that is required. So, so was there a switch for you where you thought that even though at the moment it, it kind of sucks or it's it's not what I wanted, this is kind of my dream and I'm going to keep pushing. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit my, my kind of my situation with Dragon Force and then everything that's happened after that was uh, quite a lucky and coincidental one um, compared to, someone who really worked their way up through the ranks and, you know, got their band big because um, obviously I just jumped into the hot seat with Dragon Force <laughs> and um, that was, that was that. So, uh, so yeah, it wasn't really like something that I ever kind of thought would be a um, uh, lucrative, well, still not lucrative, but like a, <laughs> a valid career path. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I never pushed like other bands to that level or anything. I just kind of, auditioned for Dragon Force and got in that way. So it's not something I ever thought I would be when I was uh, an adult, <laughs> if you can call me that. But you had to uh, hone your skills and obviously you're a great vocalist. So that's something you had to had to become, I suppose. So you mentioned that those first uh, attempts at songwriting, uh, what were those like? Do you remember any of those those early songs? <laughs> yeah um i remember a lot of them actually i could probably still play them on guitar now okay, um, okay. but yeah none, none of them are worth uh mentioning but yeah we, <laughs> i used to try and like do a little bit of uh kind of progressive metal type stuff but that was back before i really had a knowledge of how to write a good song and you know uh, it was mainly just kind of yeah learning from uh you know dream theater and symphony x and trying to write stuff like that which obviously was just a much worse version so <laughs> But then, as you mentioned, you joined this band that is already established, already has a fan base. Obviously, there's there's some uh, difficulties with that uh, coming in as the new member. Um, but in terms of the the music and and your development, how do you see those those initial years with Dragon Force and and being kind of thrust into this this more professional way of of making music? Um, I mean, it was it was definitely uh, a tough like beginning for sure because. Um, you know, stepping into uh, somebody else's boots uh, mm -hmm. and trying to sing like the old guy used to sing um, and and to try and win over as many fans as possible is like a really difficult job because obviously all the fans have been listening to uh, ZP singing on, over 10 years before I even got there. So mm -hmm. I kind of, I understand why fans are like, ah, fuck this new guy or whatever. They want to like shit on him or whatever. But yeah, uh, I mean, I just had to overcome that. And uh, I think, I think I, I I did that over the years, but um, it obviously took a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of uh, people hearing the new albums and stuff and getting used to, to the new Dragon Force sound with a different singer. So they, they were like the tougher years. But nowadays, I think it's kind of a bit in the past. And, um, you sure. know, every now and then I, I do get the odd occasional person at a signing session going, oh, you're the new singer. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's 2011, but... Yeah, I was going to say, because you've made just as many albums as uh, as the original singer, right? 
uh, yeah, I think I have now. Um, this next one coming up, I think, will be will be the the yeah the one after that. So um, yeah, I believe I, I've been in roughly the same amount of time. Yeah, that's a, that's interesting that people still <laughs> consider you the new guy. But obviously, you're 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 uh, yeah, you were very well settled within the band. But I can imagine as you are releasing those albums and as you are working within that band, when when did the ideas of uh, kind of making a, a solo record or something outside of drag force when did that idea kind of start to emerge uh so it kind of came about um during the pandemic uh okay. because i was on tour with dragon force um in the us and then uh like they were closing down venues as we were going through them basically so we had to fly home uh pretty quickly actually to get back um and so we did and then basically i had a huge amount of time on my hands and um there was no real sign of normality returning and us being able to go back on the, you know, finish the tour that we started. Yeah. Um, so I basically was sat around uh, writing some music and um, the keyboard player, who's the main songwriter on this album, uh, is also an amazing songwriter. We, we got together and hashed out, first of all, one of my songs and then one of his. And we we're like, oh, this is actually sounding pretty good. We, we could we could do something with this. And uh, originally the plan was just to kind of write something for fun and see what happens kind of thing. Mm. Um, and then he he said, take a look at this. I've got all these other songs. And I'm like, fuck, they're amazing. And I uh, just kind of fell in love with them straight away. Um, and so we kind of fleshed out demos together where I was just playing really badly, uh, like all the guitars and stuff like that and programming drums uh, with Shaz. And then, um, yeah, next thing you know, it was sounding good enough to be like, this needs vocals. So then we just kind of went over everything and wrote the lyrics together. And that, that's basically how it happened, really. It was kind of, uh, wasn't really planned. It just sort of mm. happened as we had so much time on our hands. Did the songs already have that kind of ani anime feel to them, at, at least some of them? Yeah, so um, the first one that we did together was, uh, was actually the one that I wrote, which was the mm. is the bonus track, uh, the one that's in Japanese. Okay. Um, so I kind of set the set the uh, the theme of the whole thing with the right. first song, and then I was like, "Do you, can you write stuff like this?" And he's like, "Yep, absolutely." And and we just kind of combined the power metal genre and the anime opening sounding thing a little bit with uh, Japanese pop music and just sort of mixed the whole thing together. So that was like the goal from the outset. Like we want to create something that sounds like this, and mm. then you know the whole thing just kind of came into place now did you know how to speak Jap uh, japanese or did you kind of learn to to do it phonetically and, and get away with it all right well <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing about this i'd love to lie to you and tell you yes i definitely can but i can't <laughs> um i can probably impress a japanese person for about five seconds and then it just <laughs> falls apart so um no the, the way that that was written was actually really really difficult um because mm. Uh, if you write lyrics in English, obviously you you have a tendency to try and make things rhyme in the key places. Yeah. Uh, and then as soon as you translate it, nothing rhymes anymore. So you have to translate it, make it rhyme again. And then and then what I did is I had a friend basically uh, send me vocal messages on WhatsApp, line by line, how okay. to pronounce it. And then I just kind of sang it from there. So, yeah, it's a bit of a um, it was a bit of a process to get there. But supposedly, it sounds quite convincing. So uh, I'll take that. Yeah, that I thought it was really good. But when you do, when you attempt something like that, uh, well, let me ask it differently. Why was it important to do it in Japanese? Um, because so there's, there's there's sort of two reasons for it. One one of them being it was supposed to be a Japanese bonus track, mm. and uh, I kind of thought that would be a really cool thing to do to do exclusively for them um but in the end the way things went it ended up being a real album track um but sort of the, the second reason for it is i don't know why but when i hear a song that's sang in a foreign language if i don't understand what the song is about i kind of fill in the gaps myself you know uh and i i think that it's almost like having ambiguous lyrics that you can kind of make your own mm -hmm. interpretations of for some reason hearing a song in a different language just makes me fill in all the gaps and I think that's like quite a unique and awesome thing to do so I thought yeah it's you know it's almost like like when Japanese bands will have a chorus that's in English you know they probably don't know what they're yeah. singing about <laughs> I just kind of did the reverse of that oh, but I think that's really cool and 
in terms of the the feel and the lyrics, it, it also fits the song. If that makes sense, it it, it is that kind of positive, uplifting, empowering uh, type of, of feeling. So yeah. because that that was so, sort of like the blueprint uh, for the album. Where did this come from? This feeling? What was it? Just being stuck at home and wanting to to explore the world, or, or how did you arrive <laughs> at that point where it's no, no, let's go, let's let's have this energetic, yeah. optimistic stuff. I don't know. I mean, I think. Um... I feel like these days, especially in the power metal genre, like uh, it's missing a bit of that. Mm. I mean, there are some bands that do it really well, actually, like definitely a few, um, like Twilight Force, for example, that they, they do mm. this kind of stuff really well. Um, but there's a lot more sort of generic power metal these days, which is almost like nursery rhymes with double kick pedals. And it's just like, OK. Um, and I and I kind of think that this, you know, I, I want to, when I listen to music, I either want I want to feel something extreme, whether it's like extreme uplifting or sad or whatever the thing is. Yeah. But I find a lot of stuff doesn't make me feel a lot these days. Um, some bands do. But uh, so, yeah, it was like, let's let's write something that takes you on a journey um, and really like takes you to the highs and to the lows kind of thing. Um, and yeah, that, that's 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 always been the goal, really. That, like we don't want to write music that stays somewhere in the middle and just makes you feel. I don't know, mm. not much. <laughs> so, that was a bit of a shit answer, but yeah. No, no, but it it makes sense. I mean, when you go for it, just, just really go for it. That's the, that's kind that's of the mentality, right? Absolutely, yeah. We we even like lyrically, we were we were trying to think of what what are the lyrics that make this thing soar the most. Like the, even if it's mm. a bit dumb, just just go for the thing that really like makes you feel something. So yeah, that was the whole purpose of it, really. And you mentioned visiting Japan in 2014, if I remember correctly. But did you do kind of like a, a deep dive into the culture as well? Because there are some some very interesting artists that you <laughs> collaborated with on the album. And and that, that, like I've never heard of uh, Ryojin, and and I'm gonna listen to them a lot more after this. But uh, <laughs> what what does that kind of? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you did research, but delving into that that kind of feel and and working with those people, how did that affect? The outcome um so so basically like um i already knew uh ryoji from ryujin okay. I, I knew him from uh touring because we played a show in taiwan and they were supporting us they, they used to be called gize they've changed their name mm. recently um and basically he's like a japanese version of me and like we just got on really well we've been friends ever since um and he's an awesome musician and yeah, he was like a really obvious choice of somebody who can bring something a bit unique to the whole, uh, to the album. And then from there, I've always been a fan of like uh, X Japan and Versailles and Jupiter as well. Mm. Um, and all those kind of bands. And so uh, Sue from Galnerius was another one of those guitar players. I was like, fuck, that's, that would be so amazing to have him on the album, but I bet he'd never do it. So I just kind of emailed him and he's like, yep, I'll do it. So I'm like, okay. fuck. <laughs> so yeah, just just kind of, I already knew of most of these musicians and I thought, you know, they're going to bring something pretty cool to it. And it's it's just a bit different, you know, like if you have a bunch of predictable guests that sing on everything or play on everything, it's like, uh, sure. great, you know. So just tried to mix things up a little bit. No, that makes sense. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure you could have asked Herman to play a, a bunch of stuff, but that, that was kind ah. of not the point, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no that would that would uh that's it it needs to be a bit of a departure you know um, right i've already got fred playing on the album so it would be a bit weird if it was just it would just be dragon force then really wouldn't it with a different yeah fair enough. It. <laughs> so, yeah so uh, let's delve into a, a couple of songs then i, I like I'll, I'll just self-indulge myself and, and go into the ones that i really like um the one that that kind of stuck out to me, was Call of the Martyrs. So, so let's 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 jump into the, that one. What was the starting point for that song? Okay, uh, actually, funnily enough, that was pretty much the second song, or maybe okay. the third song that we worked on. Again, this is Shaz D is the composer, and then sure. I kind of decorated it with vocals, and actually ended up working on the middle section, the instrumental bit, quite a lot with him. So, um, yeah, that that one was an, an early days demo that we were like, you know, it'd been bubbling away in the background the whole time. And um, yeah, I, I got Stevie T and Galen Stapley to play guitar solos on that. So that's a really cool like addition for that song. And I think their parts really like make that instrumental bit make sense. Um, mm. But yeah, this is a kind of 
a more of a sort of storytelling, uh, but kind of traditional power metal sounding song. Um, and I think Shaz's work on the keyboards is like amazing. It's also have has like moments of just like beautiful playing and uh, you yeah. know. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's kind of that's kind of the song. Uh, and it, if you ask me what it's about, it kind of is a bit ambiguous, a bit too probably ambiguous to even answer. <laughs> well, you, you don't have to explain it, but when do the lyrics come in? Is it once you hear kind of the track and and, and certain words pop into your mind, or do you already have certain uh, words or sentences written down? How do you do generally write lyrics? Uh, well, I'd say that normally the process that we we've had is that um, you kind of try and first of all imagine a couple of words that would really fit well in certain places. So you get those keywords nailed down and then like try and work backwards from there. Uh, and then obviously you got to try and inject some story into there and, and also um, make sure that it's following what music, what the music is also doing. So sure. as the atmosphere changes, you need to kind of change up what you're singing about. But um, for, for the song you were just talking about, Call of the Martyrs, that was like a mainly Shaz uh lyrics on which is why i have no oh, idea okay. <laughs> but the other ones um yeah that was kind of the way i did it um and then like i said before just trying to have the most impactful sort of one liner to open your chorus with and then uh and then flesh out a kind of story around that but it's it's funny it changes on different songs to be honest because sure. there, there were some where like the verse was really easy to write and then the chorus was like ah oh, man this is not coming together and then you know we kind of hashed things out and made it work so it's kind of different song per song really yeah, makes sense. And I'm I'm sure uh, you're very proud of all the songs. But is there perhaps one uh, one line of lyric or even just a phrase or something that you, that you were really happy to, uh, how it turned out or that that you came up with it? Uh, actually, funny enough, I'm I'm in the process of uh, editing a third music video right now. Okay. So the the next music video is for the song Starbound Stories, mm. and a, a perfect example of when you perfectly match like the feeling of a chord progression and words is the the first line of that chorus that this is my calling now is my time that I don't know why that whole chorus to me it just it really hits home like it's a real victorious kind of like uplifting feeling chorus um yeah. and I have just been listening to it over and over because I've been doing this fucking video so I'm like it's in my head <laughs> but yeah I'm pretty proud of that one I think that's okay. that's uh like it, you can't listen to that song and not start smiling so you know but again then that, that kind of uplifting nature and it's such a such a nice phrase is that something you kind of um i don't want to make it too complicated but it's kind of like a mantra in a way or is it something you tell yourself like okay it's 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 uh let's enjoy the, enjoy this thing and go for it in a way yeah i mean i mean ultimately what what more do you really want from like an art form you know mm -hmm. if something makes you feel really good uh obviously it's nice to have contrast you don't always just want stuff that makes you feel happy because that would kind of get boring or whatever but um yeah the the uplifting nature of it also is kind of complemented by the technicality of stuff and i think when you when you mix together like really difficult singing with like a real positive message and then a real shreddy solo it just kind of hammers home uh the the whole thing um can't think how to explain that any better than that but yeah, it's oh, like an, an amalgamation of the yeah, the whole lot. No, and then, then yeah, especially the the way the, the 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 music is driven, and then as you mentioned, the the instruments coming over the top, and then uh, I believe there's electric violin on the the album, obviously guitars and and the keyboards as you mentioned. So there's there's this whole uh, mix of textures that that kind of push or drive that that feeling forward, which is really cool to listen to. That and I suppose that's why anime songs are so popular as well. Um, yeah. And that, I did read that you you're not the biggest watcher of anime, but is is there did you did you go through a lot of, a lot of those themes and kind of listen to the music? Yeah, yeah. So I had like a, a list of themes I was listening to, um, but I, I also had a hard drive like full of just Japanese pop music that Fred okay, gave me okay. ages ago. And um, when I'm just like working away, I was like sort of listening to it, and. Uh, every like one or two songs like fuck that's a banger like oh the chorus of that song or, like oh the intro of this one and um the problem was that all the file names were in Japanese so I basically had no chance of ever finding out who they were um but I think I just kind of absorbed that uh you know a lot of 
chord progressions and cadences <laughs> and the feeling that you get from it and stuff. But but as far as uh, anime goes, I've, I've watched a handful, to be honest. Um, but the music, I really like. So, yeah, that's a tough question because I was like, ah, oh, anime power metal. And then I'm like, yeah, I haven't really watched any, but uh, yeah. No, but it's a funny thing because I think we're somewhat of a similar age. And when we were young, it was pretty much, I remember Dragon Ball Z and that's pretty much it. And and now yeah. it's become such a big part of, of popular culture. It's it's crazy, really. That's it. And, and I think like when we were kids, it wasn't popular. So mm. like I always felt kind of ashamed that I was watching Dragon Ball Z or like <laughs> Cowboy Bebop and stuff. And All then right. like nowadays, it's just a whole thing of its own. So, you know. Yeah, and it's been um, embraced, and then as I mentioned, the cult, uh, the the music is so much uh, so accepted uh, these days, and I th I think that's really cool, and and the fact that that an album like this can arise out of or at least uh, be inspired by something like that is really cool because it, it 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 does add a sense of nostalgia, at least for for maybe somebody of of my age. Yeah, you know? uh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting crossover of stuff, and and I think that there's a lot of people. Uh, like that might be attracted to this album because it, it isn't so obviously metal. It's like mm. a real mixture. Um, and someone was interviewing me the other day saying that uh, some of her friends came around and they're kind of nerd, nerdy in a good <laughs> way uh, type of people. And they were like, oh, what's this? This sounds like, and they were talking about anime stuff. And it's like, really? oh, wow. Yeah, it's actually from basically power metal. It's become this. So yeah, I think it's it's cool. I hope I hope I kind of, you know, attract a different audience from your regular metalheads as, as well as you know metalers yeah there, there, a couple of songs have been released have, have you heard anything uh in terms of a reaction and i don't know if, if the i think the last track hasn't been released yet but but the japanese one uh, are, are you kind of anxious how, how, how that will go over in japan or uh... <laughs> well yeah i mean the, the reason i'm worried about that is just in case like there's been a horrible mistranslation and someone's <laughs> having a joke with me i'm singing about something horrible but um yeah no i mean the the, the reaction so far has been really good and um astro live the first one we put out was like very power metal and that was almost a tactical decision really so that people mm. don't get scared off by ah oh, this the dragon force singer is doing something different like no nah, it's, it's quite similar um and then the siren after that you know was trying to lead people more into the the kind of more poppy vibe of some of the songs on the album uh but i think the reception has been really good um again like i think uh, some of like the people who just like consider themselves metal through and through probably feel a bit divided about uh, the mm. last single because it's not that heavy. Um, but I think there'll be one over in the end because there's plenty of heavier stuff on the album. Sure. I just haven't heard it yet. I have two more questions. The first is um, how important is it, or especially now in high, hindsight, how important was making this solo record for you? Um, in all honesty, now that now that I've arrived at this point, it feels like an important thing. Um, but until until I kind of had that time off back in 2020, I hadn't really thought about it. So mm. it's I wish I could say that it's like a life goal that I've ticked off, um, but it isn't. <laughs> but now that I'm here, I'm extremely proud and it feels important. But it's just, you know, not something I never thought I'd do. Uh, but I'm very happy that I have done it. Yeah, but I, I can imagine that that. Now, now, uh, now that you've you've gone through it, you, you have the um, you have the ability to explore your own musicality a little bit more, and you have kind of your name on the front of it, so you bear uh, a lot of the the weight of it. So, so is is that different then, or, or, or now that you are doing that, is that exciting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's a funny one because yeah, like um, if people don't like it, they're going to rip me a new one because it's got my name on it. So it's like <laughs> it's it's my responsibility but um but no no it's it's really cool because it's it's allowed me to do a couple of extra things like um with dragon force obviously um sam writes almost all the music and then mm. um the the album cover and the artwork and the videos and everything is kind of decided by well it's somewhat like a decided by committee but mostly sam right. and herman do everything um so the the cool thing about this is that yeah i got to kind of push it in a direction i wanted to go uh, in terms of the mix as well, I got to choose how my vocals would sit in the right. mix and uh, writing all the backing vocals and the harmonies to, you know, complement it as much as I could. Um, so that's been really cool. And experimenting with a few sort of different stylistic choices in the mix of like, 
who I'm going to have doing backing vocals and what style of singers and stuff like that. And obviously having the full control over the guests. Mm. So, that, yeah, it's been a lot of cool shit from this album that, you know, um, I wouldn't have got to do otherwise. So, yeah. Yeah, it's great to hear. Last question then. Uh, I just may maybe half an hour or an hour ago uh, received an email uh, stating that uh, Dragon Force is signed to Napalm now. Um, All right. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's news yet or whatever. This won't be published uh, until a while. But so, so. Okay. <laughs> but but um, yeah, what does that mean for, for Dragon Force and, and the next album? Because the, I, I've heard that uh, quite a bit of songs were already done. Quite a number of songs. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I mean the, the working with Napalm, I don't, I don't know exactly what that means for Dragon Force because I'm kind of quite distant from the, all that okay. side of things uh, as far as the band goes. Um, but yes, we've been working on a bunch of stuff. And I think today, actually, uh, we just announced that we're doing a tour, uh, which is a US tour. Pretty right. sure that was today. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah, that, that's happening. And um, that will obviously, that means that we've, we're doing an album, which is, we're going to announce some stuff soon, but um, I'm not really in any position to say when, but pretty, pretty soon. Um, there'll be some big announcements and yeah, we've been working on it for a while. So it's like at the stage now where it's time to tell people about it sort of thing. Very good to hear. Can't wait to, yeah. to see what uh, you come up with. And, but, but first and foremost, uh, can see, uh, what happens with your own album. So yeah, a lot yeah, of excitement cool. coming up, uh, yeah, Mark. certainly going to be busy, very busy. <laughs> well, that was good. Excellent. Um, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Cool, man. Thanks a lot for the interview. Cheers.